The history of psychology goes back as far as the history of humanity. Ever since one caveman looked at another caveman and wondered how he could persuade him to share that animal he just killed, people have been doing psychology. But doing psychology is different from understanding psychology, and so in this video we're going to look at our understanding of what psychology is through history. Now for a long time, the people who primarily considered questions of human nature were theologians and philosophers. 17th century philosopher John Locke, for instance, made the claim that the newborn child is a tabula rasa, literally a blank tablet or blank slate, undefined by prior learning and ready to be written on and defined by their experience with the world. This is an early version of what we think of as the nature-nurture debate, where we wonder how much of human nature is innate and how much is environmental. It's a psychological question posed by a philosopher. Another 17th century philosopher, René Descartes, posed a more fundamental question. How is the mind connected to the body? Some people assume that Descartes came from a tradition of dualism, fundamental to many religious faiths, which assumes humans have both a physical form and a non-physical form. Within religion, this may be a spirit or a soul, but for Descartes it was the mind. Again, though, this is a philosopher asking a psychological question. How does human conscious experience arise from biological mechanisms? So for centuries, philosophers asked these questions, but they never gathered data. That's one of the things that helps differentiate a psychologist from a philosopher, as the latter tend to think a lot about the implications of their ideas, but they don't necessarily test them empirically. Philosophers are an important part of the history of psychology, but most people consider them separate from the field of psychology. The formal history of psychology really starts in the 1800s, when people like Wilhelm Wundt, Edward Bradford Titchener, and William James opened the early labs for the study of psychology as a science. Now, truth be told, what they called science wouldn't necessarily pass muster by today's standards. Wundt's approach, called structuralism, often relied on a method called trained introspection, within which a person examined their own internal experiences in a formal way in order to identify the structures of the mind. Interesting, but also very subjective. William James' approach of functionalism, derived from evolutionary theory, asked what the survival function was for different aspects of human behavior and the mind. Again, it asked interesting questions, but often explored the scientific implications by a thought rather than by gathering of data. So for some time, these were the two dominant approaches to psychology as a science. Meanwhile, around the same period, the most famous psychologist in modern history, Sigmund Freud, was developing his own ideas about personality, development, and psychological disorders from his practice of psychoanalysis, a form of psychotherapy. He built his model based on his observations of and interactions with his patients. He didn't formally gather data, though, so his model has often been viewed as unscientific. Still, as we move into the 20th century, Freud's model gained traction and public attention. In the 1920s, Freud's model became widely known thanks in part to booming economies in Western Europe and the United States, which gave people disposable income to spend on Freudian psychoanalysis. His model influenced many works of literature, literature and film of the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. So, Freud became the public face of psychotherapy. Meanwhile, some other psychologists were working to make psychology more scientific. Scientists such as Ivan Pavlov, John Watson, and B.F. Skinner took the approach that since formal science requires observation and measurement of data, the science of psychology should study only those things that are observable and measurable. We cannot see internal mental states, only external behavior. So they declared that the science of psychology should be the study of observable human behavior, and thus was born the field of 
behaviorism. Behaviorism quickly became the dominant approach to the science of psychology. And overall, the field was mostly divided between behaviorism as its science and the Freudian approach for the practice of psychology in psychotherapy. This division dominated psychology through the 1930s and into the 1940s. But the post-war period would bring dramatic shifts in the field, and we'll pick up with those in the next video.